What is up, people? What is up, people? This is Abraham Walker with Ask A Walker, the Northern Virginia real estate agent. And we're back at you with another live stream. We go live every night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for joining me on tonight's show. We have a great conversation. So tonight we're going through 100 questions. Every first time home buyer should ask. Tonight's question is, when do you know I found, or when do I know I found the right, the right house, right? So we're going to be talking to you about what does that mean? What does the right house mean? How do you know? We're going to give you some perspective from the book. I disagree with a lot of this, of, of this section in the book. So we're going to get into what I disagree about. And hopefully this will help you in making your home buying decision, making a choice on what home you want to purchase in the future. Just to let you know how the show works, I have some prepared talking points I'm going to go through for in regards to question number 27. After I finish up with the question, I'm going to take any questions from our viewers. So if you if you have a question either about real estate, Northern Virginia, buying a home, selling a home, investing in real estate, whatever it is, we'll get into it after the presentation is over. For the individuals who are ready to start their real estate journey, there is a link in the description to the Perfect Home Questionnaire. Fill out that form and we will schedule a time to meet online via Zoom to answer any and all questions that you may have about real estate. Anything, anything, I'll answer it. All right, so now that we got all of those pleasantries out, let's, let's go into the content. Let's go into the content. All right. When do I know I've found the right house? This book is a little confusing. So in this book, it recommends that you stay objective. You, you don't, you don't take anything. um, Hold on, hold on. Let's see. Mm -mm. Let's get this. The right video going. Mm. There we go. We got that. Excellent. All right. All right. Excellent. Excellent. There we go. There we go. Now we're now we're cooking with grease. Excellent. So this book recommends that you 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 take this mindset of any house or that yeah, any house is the right house, right? So you don't want to get too overly invested in a property. You don't want to become emotional about this situation. You want to essentially stay objective, right? You want to have this steady perspective. Don't fall in love with the property. Despite the fact that you're going to be living in this property for the next seven to 11 years, they would like you to be emotionless when it comes to this home transaction, this home sale transaction. I disagree with this, this notion. I disagree with this. And the reason why I disagree with this is because this is a big deal. You're about to spend a lot of money on this property. This is for some people, the most expensive transaction they will ever do in their lives. This is a big milestone for a lot of individuals. Why wouldn't you have emotions tied to this particular transaction? It's impossible not to have your emotions worked up when you find a house that you believe is the place that maybe you'll raise your kids in. Maybe you have some new memories if you're a new couple. Maybe it's a new location that you just moved to and you're about to embark on a new journey. There's a lot of things that are that go into purchasing a house that you simply can't be objective, right? You, you simply can't uh, remain neutral on this concept. But this book would recommend that you do. What's, what's interesting about the, the recommendation in this book is that They would like you to stay objective, but they give a story about how even the author of the book, when she purchased the property herself, she couldn't look past the fact that the property that that she wanted was a condo with a doorman and how a new construction, like a townhouse, single family home would have fared out better as far as an investment opportunity. But she was drawn to this, this condo that had a doorman. The reason why this is an absurd concept to to stay objective or to to refrain from using your emotions in this transaction is really tied to the fact that 
a condo purchase is really for a different phase of life than a single family home or even a townhome. We rarely, I have never in my 14 years of selling real estate, I have never had somebody who is interested in a condo also tell me they would like to see single family homes. Never. I've never had that happen. Why? Because these two individuals want different things out of life. A single family home, unless you're talking about in Arlington, a single family home is going to put you deeper into the suburbs. It's not going to be a very walkable community because how could it be walkable if there's single family homes everywhere? You're only going to get that walkable community, the the amenities inside of a building or a development, inside of condos, and condos are located different places. So you see how your your emotions kind of dictate what stage of life you're in. Your emotions are a part of your selection process. I say embrace your emotions. Use your emotions to make a proper decision. Now, in this book, they also give us an example of how Joanne, the real estate agent that is kind of the um, the person that's interviewed for a lot of these sections, Joanne, she allows her clients to, uh, if she says, if they sit down on the couch, it's a good sign. So even Joanne, when she's showing people properties, she uses emotions to help them to make a better decision, right? To Or at least to get them over the edge. One of the things that's confusing about this book is that it tells you, this book tells you to it suggests that you should use a real estate agent, but at the same time, it says that sometimes real estate agents or brokers will seem to encourage you to fall in love with the house. They'll say things like, isn't it beautiful? Or I could spend my whole life here. Or you'll be happy here. Or don't you just love this place? Isn't your real estate agent supposed to assist you in securing the thing that you want, which is this asset, which is this home, which is this property that you are interested in? Isn't that your real estate agent's job? Wouldn't it make sense for your agent to confirm if you do indeed like the property that you're looking at? So I don't I don't know what this book is trying to tell us. Is this book trying to tell us that agents are evil or is this book trying to tell us that agents are a good idea? It's kind of confusing to me. And my perspective on this is you're not going to be you're not going to be able to be objective about a personal residence, right? This is your primary residence. This is the place that you're moving into to create new memories. You're also, if you think about like when you're a child, you have memories about your childhood home, right? That's going to bring itself to the uh the top of the conversation that you may want to revisit, that you may want to create some of the same memories that you are already or have been accustomed to. This is why removing the emotions from a real estate transaction is just not, it's not likely. This is not an investment property, right? This is another thing too. This book gives you the illusion of the, this, this book gives you the illusion that, you know what, if you buy a home, then it's going to appreciate or it is going to make you money in the future. That may not be the case. So you have to wrap your head around the fact that this is you're not buying this property for investment purposes. You're buying this property as a part of your plan, your life plan, your financial plan, your uh, family plan, your family plan. There's a there's several reasons why buying a home makes sense, not just tied to investments. If that was the case, a lot of people would be renting out rooms. They would rent out their garages. They would rent out their kitchens, right? But people don't. They rent out their backyards. How many people you know renting out spaces in their homes? They don't because that's their that's your home is a different place than um, some type of transactional nature or some type of transactional relationship that you get from a commercial property. Your personal residence is not commercial property. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. One thing I will say that this section highlighted that I think is very important is that when you when you find a property, just know that there is more than one right home for you. So sometimes when we're working with clients, they will they will become obsessed about a particular property and they really don't know if they're going to be able to secure the property, right? Because since we participate in the market, the market means that there's other buyers that may also want the same property. You have to come to terms with the seller 
to negotiate an offer that makes sense for them in this upcoming spring market, right? So this video is being recorded in February. So spring is right ahead. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to lose out on homes they really wanted because other people also want those properties. So just keep that in mind. I think that I think that if you can wrap your head around the idea that there are always going to be properties coming on the market, there are always going to be opportunities for you to secure a deal. There's always going to be opportunities for you to make a place a home, then you can, you can just move forward. You can move forward with your purchase. Last thing I want to talk to you on before we open up to questions is you are looking for a home at this time because you're in a certain cycle right now. Maybe you're single and you need a place, maybe like a condo or something like that. I'm pro condo. So I always mention them. Maybe you need a condo or maybe your, your family's growing up. Maybe your, your household is growing and you want to purchase a townhouse. Maybe you, um, maybe your kids, are getting older and you want to put them into a better rated public school. So maybe you want to buy a single family home in a highly rated public school section uh, or a section of the area with the highly rated public schools. Maybe you are downsizing, right? So different houses are for different stages of life. So wherever you are in your home buying journey, you're just looking for the right home right now. Don't get fixated on the forever home because I don't, I hate to be the person that brings this up to you. We, we don't stay around for forever. You know, we're here for a short period of time and try to find a place that you can make into a home. And that's it. So that's it. So how do you find a, when do you know I found the right house? You know, you found the right house if the items on your wish list and also your need to have list, they they come out, you know, on a positive side, right? You know, you found the right house if you can meet your commute criteria, if you can meet your household criteria, if there's things to do around the area, if that's important to you, if it has the space, that's how you find the right home. And there, there are always going to be homes coming on the market. In the event you can't find something right now, give yourself some time, give yourself some time, and you will eventually find something that works for you, and you can start that uh, home-making journey. So that's it. That's it for tonight's question. Question number 27, when do I know I've found the right house? This question out is out of 100 questions every first time home buyer should ask. I recommend the book. I do. I do. I think the book has some good talking points and I think it's a, a great guide. Right. So it's, it walks you through the conversations that agents may not have with you. So you can kind of, excuse me, you could be preemptively or preempting them. To these types of discussions, I think that this is important. While I don't agree with some of the content in this book, I do agree that having a book like this will make your home buying experience better. If you're ready to start your real estate journey, there is a link in the description to the Perfect Home Questionnaire. Fill out that form and we will schedule a time to meet online via Zoom to answer any and all of your real estate questions. Now we are at the phase of the this little talk where I answer any questions that you may have about buying a home, selling a home or investing in real estate. Put those questions down below and we will, we will get to them. We'll stay on as long as you have questions. Post your questions down below. 
earlier in the live stream, we had an observation on TikTok about this. The Springfield townhouse with the loft space was incredible. Thank you so much for that observation. So that was a on TikTok. We have a, um, a video of a loft space that I showed to one of my clients, and it's actually one of my favorite layouts. I love the I love the loft style in the owner's bedroom. It adds a it adds additional level to your space, and you also get the opportunity to maybe have a little office space or a larger dressing room, sitting room. It's it's a cool space. It's a cool space. Kind of reminds me of what they do with the what the builders are doing with the the new construction single family homes, where you have one space for your bedroom, and then you have another space for like a sofa coffee machine coffee maker some place for you to watch tv all in one room post your questions down below let me know if you have any questions. your real estate questions down below if you have them i'll answer all right while we're while we're waiting for some questions to come up um wolf trap in in the tyson's area has released their 2023 summer lineup we have john legend coming to the area june 2nd to the it's june 2nd and 3rd charlie puth i don't know who that is but it's a pop music guru interesting buddy guy charlie per charlie puth will be here june 4th buddy guy june 11th kenny loggins June 15th. This is at Wolf Trap. Tori Amos or Amos. July 5th. Sting. Wow. A lot of ODB goodies, huh? Sting is going to be here September 1st through the 2nd. The Avid Brothers, May 25th, 27th. Trombone Shardy and Arlene's Avenue with Ziggy Marley and Mavis Staples. June 17th. Interesting. I like Trombone Shardy's uh, album. If you don't have it, you should check it out. It's a pretty good album. If you like, if you like jazz music, I guess. Robert Plant, Allison Cross. Cross. June 29th. Jason Isabel Isabel and the 400 unit August 2nd mm -mm. excellent excellent good stuff so that's at wolf trap that's at wolf trap and so that's their 2023 summer lineup you can see this article on northern virginia magazine.com a great local magazine that is full of useful content. Kind of keep you up to date on what's going on. Post any real estate questions you may have. What are y'all doing for for um, Valentine's Day? Anybody have anything special they're doing, doing for Valentine's Day? Anybody going to a special restaurant? 
Do you have anything planned? I've never been a Valentine's Day kind of guy, but we may do something this year. May take the misses out. Maybe we'll get lunch. Go to a nice little place. But what about yourself? Anything? Are you doing anything for Valentine's Day? Post your real estate questions now below. All right, on TikTok, we have a question. No, just a statement. I went to Bresca this recent Sunday. How was that? Is that a restaurant? Bresca. The name sounds familiar. Did you enjoy Bresca? It's a Michelin star restaurant in DC. Oh, uh, okay. I thought the name sounded familiar. How was it? Did you enjoy that restaurant? Was that a good experience for you? Let's look that up. Bresca. Very good. I highly recommend going and getting the six course. Okay. So you get the six course meal. Was it hard to get a um, reservation? Were, were reservations challenging to secure? And with the six course, is that like a special seating? It's expensive, but it's so worth it. Okay. What is the, how much does the six course cost? Oh, wow. Let's see. I'm on their menu right now. Let's put, I can put this on the, for our YouTubers. My buddy got it for my boyfriend and I do, and I'm not sure about the reservation. Okay. Okay. Six course meal. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, that must have been the tasting menu. There's no price online about how much the tasting menu cost. I have to look into that. What did you have at uh, Bresca that, that you liked the most? And seating was okay. They have a small dining room. Okay. So probably something you got to really look look to in advance six course was 150 ish oh that's not bad that's reasonable that's reasonable we did a um so we're from new orleans and we, we went to new orleans like six years ago for a business conference and my wife and i went to commander's palace for a 12 course i think it was a 12 course meal and we paid like 250 dollars a piece for it so it was 500 total, uh, but we got to sit in the kitchen. So that was pretty, that was a pretty cool experience. But if you ever go to New Orleans, you should definitely check out Commander's Palace. If you have money, check out the chef table experience. You do need to call in advance. We had reservations for the chef table, like three to three to six months. I don't recall, but it took a while. Um, they were actually booked when I called. So I just called every day until somebody canceled. And I was able to get us in. But it was a great experience. That's dope. I heard the food is really good down there. Oh, yes. Yes. The food in New Orleans is really good. You should definitely bring stretchy pants. You know, some jogging pants or something like that for your return trip back. Because you will most likely um, gain some weight. And expand just a little bit. right? So you want to be comfortable on your flight back home. Bring yourself a nice little stretch, stretch t-shirt, stretch pants, 
Yeah. Food coma for days. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's how New Orleans is. That's how New Orleans is. We definitely recommend it. You should go at least one time. You should go at least one time, hit up the famous spots. The nice thing about New Orleans restaurants is that we don't really, we're not known for chains. Uh, chain restaurants so there are a lot of restaurants with big family names or big history and you get to experience this diverse food options right also new orleans new orleans chefs pride themselves on their performance so i think that you would uh you would definitely enjoy a food trip a food trip in new orleans they also have, you know, live music if you're into that. But you know what? The way music goes these days, I mean, D.C. is also cool in the sense that we have live music as well. We have different um, festivals in D.C. proper. So there's also, I just went through, like, what what's going on in the Wolf, Tra uh, Wolf Trap this year. So live music, eh, you know, I mean, sure. New Orleans is also known for people being allowed to uh, consume uh, beverages outside of establishments. So a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, I could drink and walk down the street. But that's, you know, that gets old. The food is really where it's at. All right, all right. Let me know your real estate questions. If you have any real estate questions, post them down below. Also, let me know what your plans are for Valentine's Day. Are you going somewhere? If you're, if you're single, are you going to go somewhere by yourself? Maybe go sit at a bar at a nice restaurant. Be, be by yourself, but with other people. Make sure you get out. Mm -mm. Have a good night, man. You do the same. You do the same. Thanks for jumping on. I appreciate it. Mm -mm. So Bresca, that's a new place we need to go check out. Bresca, six-course meal there, about $150 a piece. Michelin Star Restaurant. The food looks pretty tasty. Just looking online. Oh, that bread service looks really good. Look at that. That's like a biscuit. That's like old-school biscuits. Mmm. I may just go just for the breakfast, the the biscuits. We got duck breast, wagyu beef, okay. Wine pairing, okay. Ice ice cream and caviar, interesting. That's interesting. Why would you do that? I don't know. I'm pretty sure you thought about it. What's that? Far, far I don't think I've ever eaten that. All right. All right. Look at that. Interesting stuff. So Bresca. Bresca. One of the viewers said that we should go there. Oh, they got the little Madelines. I love those. I love Madelines. Starbucks has some good Madelines, believe it or not. Dry age Rohan Duck. Post your questions down below. Any real estate questions you may have or any, anything about Northern Virginia. We'll stay on for a little bit longer to answer any questions that you may have. We're just looking at Bresca's menu right now. Some pictures from these. Oh, look at that. That little, it's like a little bug thing. You know, these fancy places find the most interesting ways to uh, take your money. Bees knees, interesting. Bresca. Well, that's an interesting. What is that? It's like a little tart. All right. Post your real estate questions down below. Let me know what you're thinking about buying a home, selling a home, or investing in real estate in Northern Virginia. If you have a question, I'll answer it. Let me know. Mm -hmm.
What are y'all thinking about? Do y'all think that the, this coming housing market, this coming spring, you think the price is going to go up? How much you think they're going to go up by? 5%, 10%? My guess is that the prices are going to reach last year's highs. That's right. Last year's highs, we're going to, I think we're going to reach those highs around May time frame. We have a good little ways to go, but based on the way prices have already started to increase, I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised. And also the buyers who waited are going to be disappointed that they didn't buy this past fall and winter season. I know it's kind of hard to make those decisions about buying a home when there is uncertainty in the air. And when there's uncertainty, it's usually the time when you get the best deals. Everybody wants certainty, right? Everybody wants to know, oh, you know what? If I buy a house, it has to appreciate. Or if I buy a house, this has to go right. Those are usually not the times to make the most money. Get into some of those more desirable neighborhoods. There was a townhouse on my street in Kingstown. Last year they were selling for 670 and 690, 685. 670 and 685. Somebody was trying to sell their townhouse. They put it on the market in November. They put it on the market in November and they didn't get an offer until early January. They dropped the price all the way down to 520. That's right. 100 and what set hundred and fifty thousand dollar price drop because people were scared and now there's a new listing on my block the property came on the market at 6 30 and went over the asking price went over the asking price so now you have one person who purchased at 520 and you probably have another purchase person who purchased this this past weekend or two weeks ago and they're probably going to be at like 650 640 so it's it's hard to it's hard to buy during uncertainty, right? Because the natural reaction is to to pull back, to be more conservative. The challenge with that is that real estate isn't really something that um, goes away. So even if you if you qualify for a loan, then you will be able to afford the property, and as long as you have a job, you'll still be able to make the payments. So just something to think about. Post your questions down below. Any real estate questions that you may have. Did y'all see this article about the two chefs in Northern Virginia who are named as James Beard semifinalists? So the James Beard Beard Award their semifinalists for the 2023 James Beard Award. The first chef is Joe Crump of Foodie in Fredericksburg. And then another chef is Ramen Rock Harper of Queen Mother's Fried Chicken in Arlington. That sounds like a place I have to go. That sounds delicious. The name of that place sounds good. Queen Mother's Fried Chicken in Arlington. Both recognized locally for their fried chicken dishes are in the running for James Beard's Best Chef Mid-Atlantic category. Oh, wow. So both of them are for the fried chicken. Interesting. I'm not really... I mean, I, I'm okay. I, I like fried chicken. I, it's not... It's not something I crave. <laughs> But you know what? This place is in Arlington. It's right down the way. Have to check that out. Okay. In addition to the the chefs, the 2023 James Beer Foundation Restaurant and Chef Award semifinalist semifinalist list includes 15 DC restaurants and chefs who have been recognized across all categories. Wow. 15. That's not bad. That's not a bad number. So there's one place called Oyster Oyster in the Outstanding Chef category. And then there's 
Riz, R-I-S, in the Outstanding Restaurant category, and Allegory, I've heard of Allegory, in the Outstanding outstanding Bar category. Okay. Excellent. So a couple of new places for you all to try. Queen Mother's. Queen Mother's Fried Chicken in Arlington. And then Foodie. So food. F-O-O-D-E. In Fredericksburg. Both got awards for their fried chicken. So those are Northern Virginia restaurants too. That's cool. If you're going somewhere for Valentine's Day, what... What do you what are you gonna go to a restaurant? Any new spot that you're gonna check out? You got any plans for Valentine's Day? That's what's coming up. That's the next next big event. Northern Virginia magazine.com or Northern Virginia Mag.com is a great resource for what's going on locally. Oh, how sad is it about the um that earthquake in Turkey. Oh my goodness. I saw some of the video about that last night and it was just horrible. My goodness. What's wild about it is that it, it, it lasted like 90 seconds. 90 seconds of shaking. Ugh. Man. 7.8 magnitude earthquake. That's that. This is a good little article. Let's look at this. How much should you be tipping in Northern Virginia? You know, before we get into this article, what do you all think about tipping uh, takeout restaurants, right? So you order takeout, you order over the phone, you're going to pick it up. How much should you tip that person who who bagged your items and prepared it for you? Do you tip? If so, how much? How much do you tip? I never know what to do in that situation because I feel like 20% is something I tip for... 20% 20% is what I tip for um, service, right? From a wait staff. So I feel like 20% is more than it's almost excessive, excessive, but I don't know. I never know what to do in those situations. Oh, there it is. They even talk about it too. Counter orders are controversial. Okay, so Kathy Thompson says, um, she says, for instance, is where there are requests for a tip at a checkout at fast casual restaurants, like on an iPad. I usually will tip because I feel pressured to. <laughs> yeah, I know what she means. I know what she means. When I get it, when I get those iPads and they kind of turn them around and swing them around to you, sometimes I, I just like impulsively press oh 20 percent because i was like oh man somebody's looking at me other times i'm like i'm not i'm just getting the burger i'm not about to give you 20 percent Interesting. So, look, nice little interesting article there on northernvirginiamagazine.com. All right. All right. So, this will be the, this is our last call for questions. Last call for questions. So, we're going to play one more song. If we don't have any questions, then we will say good night and we will see you on tomorrow. Next week, we have something exciting for you all. We're actually going to start doing a morning show. So, we'll have a show at 10 a.m. and at 8 p.m. And my wife will be joining us on this journey. We we tend to like these live streams. We get an opportunity to talk to our audience. We get an opportunity to communicate in real time. So yeah, so we'll be bringing more live streams to you. But, but one thing will change with the schedule is that uh, right now we're doing every day 
8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Since we're going to start next week, a month, a morning and a nighttime show, we're just going to do Monday through Thursday. So Monday through Thursday. What do y'all think about that? Let me know if you have any feedback about that. Monday through Thursday, a 10 a.m. show and then a nighttime show at 8 p.m. What do you think about that? Post it down below in the comment section. Love to hear your feedback. This is last call for questions. Let me know your questions. Anything about real estate, buying a home, selling a home, investing in real estate, let me know. All right, all right. So thank you all so much for joining us for another show. Another show. We will be we'll we will be back tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow's question is is now we're moving into section four. How do I know what I can afford to spend? Nice little affordability conversation. So question number 28 for tomorrow's show is how much can i afford this should be a really good topic we have a lot of pages to cover on tomorrow we'll even get into some calculations oh wow tomorrow's gonna be a meaty show good good so we'll have a we'll have a nice we'll have a nice discussion tomorrow i'll, I'll be doing a lot of prep work for tomorrow's show so that's it so that's it for today's show Thank you so much for joining. If you're ready to start your real estate journey, there is a link in the description to the perfect home questionnaire. Fill out that form and we will and we will schedule a time to meet online via Zoom to answer any and all of your questions. All right. So tomorrow will be a great show. How much can I afford? Come back at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's it. Thank you all so much for joining me on tonight. I hope you all have a great... What, what's tomorrow? It's tomorrow. Today's Tuesday. So I hope you have a great Wednesday. And I'll see you all on tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>